Just like any other person in a different profession, I go through ups and downs and I go through very tough moments. Maria Sharapova is a known legend. One cannot speak about the game of tennis without mentioning her name at some point in the story. From making her professional debut in 2001 at the young age of 14 to becoming the youngest female tennis player to reach the finals at the 2002 Australian Open Junior Championships event, the Russian former professional tennis player was known to create waves and cause a stir in almost every room she walked into. A proud winner of 36 WTA titles, including five major titles won at the French Open, the US Open, Australian Open and Wimbledon combined, Maria's success on the WTA Tour was a phenomenal one. She soon became the rule by which the success of most young and promising female players was measured for years after her debut. However, not too long after her career had gathered enough momentum, cracks began to unfold and a once splendid success story slowly began to turn sour, causing fans of tennis worldwide to begin to wonder what really happened to Maria Sharapova. I made a huge mistake and I... I've let my fans down. Maria was born in April 1987 to parents Yuri and Yelena Sharapova and was gifted her first tennis racket by a friend of the family when she was just four. Developing a keen interest in the game, she started taking her lessons with Yuri Yutkin, a Russian tennis coach, showing exceptional abilities for a very young player. Three years later, Maria and her father packed up and traveled to Florida in the US on the suggestion of Martina Navratilova. The American former professional tennis player had seen so much promise in the young child while in Moscow and felt she would do better with access to world-class training and resources abroad. She had to travel without her mother, who joined the family later in 96 due to restrictions on her visa. The master plan was to enroll Maria at the IMG Academy, run by renowned coach Nick Bolletieri, and although it took longer than originally planned due to financial limitations and the absence of sponsors, she was eventually enrolled properly at the IMG when she turned nine. Shortly after turning professional in 2001, Maria attained the position of world number six on the ITF Junior Rankings after winning three singles at the 2002 Junior Grand Slam tournaments. In quick succession, she clinched her first title on the WTA Tour at the 2003 Tennis Championships held in Japan and was awarded WTA Newcomer of the Year at the end of the season. By the clay court season the following year, Maria had successfully climbed up and was ranked among the top 20 tennis athletes worldwide on the WTA rankings. Three years after she began playing professionally, Maria won her first Grand Slam title in singles at the 2004 Wimbledon tournament, defeating the defending champion Serena Williams in a surprising turn of events. Becoming the third youngest female player to win the title and the second Russian female athlete to win a Grand Slam, her win at Wimbledon caused her to become insanely popular. She was soon tagged a top contender, ranking among the top 10 athletes on the women's tour. There were speculations that she had come to usurp the Williams sisters' dominance on the tennis courts, and rightly so, seeing that she overtook Lindsay Davenport in 2005 to become the world number one female tennis player for six straight weeks, before relinquishing the title due to injuries. Despite having this rapid climb in her career, Maria's progress soon became hampered by repetitive shoulder tears, ankle and hamstring injuries. Though injuries are definitely not uncommon for any professional athlete, especially in tennis, the first sign of trouble for Maria appeared in 2007, where she sustained an injury to her shoulder, causing her to miss out most of the clay season, returning only in time for the Istanbul Cup. This was after the tennis athlete had been forced to drop out of the Pan Pacific Open in Tokyo that year due to a hamstring injury. Although she had felt a tightness in her strings after the Australian Open, she passed it off as one of the strains that came with participating in such an intense tournament as the Grand Slam. The injury proved to be worse than she had thought, causing her to drop out of the tournament limping off the court. She was ranked below the top five for the first time in her career since she had climbed to the top of the WTA rankings. The following year, Maria experienced yet another stall in her career in the form of a shoulder injury. She had yet to come off the high that comes with claiming your third Grand Slam title, and this one was at the Australian Open. The talented athlete was diagnosed with a torn rotator cuff so serious that she had to be scheduled for surgery in order to repair it when all efforts to rehabilitate the shoulder proved abortive. She had to retire for the rest of the season as a result. In the ensuing year after her injury, Maria struggled to make a comeback. She returned to the court playing doubles with her partner Elena Vesnina at the Indian Wells Open before retiring from further tournaments in a bid to recover properly. 
Due to her continuous absence from tournaments, Maria's rankings dipped so badly that she became world number 126 on the WTA rankings for the first time in years. Despite gloomy predictions, however, the star athlete proved she was dogged and not one to go down easily. She fought her way back up and was ranked world number 14 by the end of 2009, and two years later, she clinched two more Grand Slam titles, returning back to her ranking as world number one, a mind-blowing feat if you ask me. It was 2013, and things were looking good for Maria. She had just added another career title to her belt, making it the 29th since her debut, and was now ranked world number two, only behind Serena Williams. But unknown to the star athlete, fate was about to rear its ugly head once more as she had to face another obstacle putting an end to a promising season. In a statement released on her official site, she stated that she had made the tough decision to withdraw due to bursitis in her right shoulder. She added that the shoulder had started bothering her right from the French Open in May and she now needed to take time off for her shoulder to heal properly. As if Maria didn't already have enough on her plate, what with a shuffle between hospital visits and rehab and participating in Grand Slams, 2016 brought with it another scandal surrounding the talented athlete. She had failed a drug test for performance-enhancing substances at the Australian Open. The World Anti-Doping Agency had just that year banned melodonium, a drug that had the effect of improving an athlete's endurance and recovery time, and had sent mails to its athletes as caution. Maria's defense was that she hadn't read the mail or hadn't read it properly, and because she had been taking that substance for over 10 years due to her family's history with diabetes and as treatment for a regular heartbeat under the trade name Mildredate, she didn't think it was implicated. Well, WADA seemed to think differently, and she was banned for two years from participating in any tournament. tournament. In reflection, she realized she had made a huge mistake, and with a somber look, she said she took the full responsibility for her actions. Her sentence was later reduced to 15 months after it was adjudged that she wasn't an intentional doper and it was just a case of oversight. Consequently, after the ban was over, she began participating again in major events, including the 2017 US Open, even though a few tennis players at the time, like Caroline Wozniak, thought she was being questionably favored and allowed to play center court despite being ranked 103. For a player who has attained the level of success she has in such a short period of time, Despite persistent injuries, the talented athlete has a self-declared nemesis. This was the 23-time Grand Slam champion Serena Williams. Between the two professional athletes, a total of 22 matches were played, of which Maria won only two and lost to Serena every other time. In her memoir, Unstoppable, My Life So Far, which was published in September 2017, it seemed like the star athlete could just not stop thinking about Serena and her long-standing inability to secure another win against her since 2004. Perhaps it is this inability to win against Serena that has caused her opponent to appear larger than life, casting a shadow on her achievements, or perhaps it's the unspoken war between both that seems to rear its face during interviews or conferences. Many have deemed their relationship a rivalry of sorts. After playing the game for almost 28 years, Maria announced that she was retiring professionally in 2020. A tough but clear-headed decision, given how hard she worked to come back each time she suffered a drawback. The talented athlete stated with confidence that she was proud of the way she handled herself through the many moments of her career. She added that having given everything, both physically and mentally to the sport, she was now ready to move on and was excited about what the future held for her.